Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Buffalo. We are blessed to be here and we acknowledge that the land upon we meet rests on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee people, the original nations of this land who continue to call for justice and determination. This morning, the Respectful Relations team joins Reverend Kathy to engage us in a process of creating a covenant together. Following the service, you are invited, encouraged, to join us in the parish hall for Super Sunday and to work with the people at your table for, on a project designed to lead us to the drafting of a new covenant. If you have a love of writing, let us know. We are looking for a team to craft a covenant from the creative work done at the table talk teams today. Um, and I do have a few announcements um, uh, from Bonnie Collins. <laughs> the grief group is meeting today at noon in the Gardner room. And also, um, starting actually this evening, you'll be, the online a um, auction is open. If you could just check your inserts, um, the information is there. If you need help, um, the team will be there to help you and um, to make sure that you're registered to bid. And um, they also want to, to let you know because um, Julie said we have like 90 some uh, things to bid on next week. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty packed in the parish hall. So consequently, no lunches will be served, uh, but uh, there will always be coffee. So, and that's... And now it's time to greet your neighbor. And today we're gonna to have a special ask for when you greet your neighbor, is to try to find somebody you don't know and ask them what brought them here this morning. So you guys have a, you guys have a little skit or something put together that you're going to do? Or you yeah. Add or? Uh, we did rehearse it a little bit, okay. so we had an idea, but it's going to okay. be ad lib too. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah. Go for it. Hand it up. Yes. Where is the bell? Oh. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, here's this thing.
morning. <laughs> good morning. Oh, it's good to see all of you. My husband said there won't be anybody in church this morning because the masters are on. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? <laughs> it's so funny. He told call me yesterday, he, and he left a message. He said, don't call me till after 9 o'clock <laughs> at night because <laughs> of the masters. Okay, I'm Reverend Kathy Harrington. I'm the interim minister of this church. And our opening words this morning are by Victoria Weinstein. This church is a body. May this body breathe and be together in the spirit of hope. And may it feel held by comfort. Those who seek consolation, may they find it in the solace of this moment. This church is a body. It is as strong as all the men and the women who ever gathered within its walls. It is the power of all they dreamed and all that they have done. This church is a body. It is as vulnerable as the most newborn and untried of its members. It is ancient and it is ever new. And this church is a story. It is a story of lives that are interwoven, brought together in this place and this time for the simple purpose of caring for one another and helping one another along the arduous path from birth to death. And this church is a vision. It is a vision of unity amid diversity. It is a vision of reverence of all creation. It is a vision that beckons us beyond the concerns of our own skins. So I also want to read to you just briefly, our UUA president, Sophia Bentoncourt, um, posted this, um, I think on Facebook. She wrote, covenant is a vow of our hearts. Covenant helps me first to bring myself back into relationship before I ever ask others to come back into covenant. Covenant is staying at the table a willingness to be transformed by the reality of others. And she wrote a covenant based on the uh, work of James Luther Adams' Five Smooth Stones. With hope for a bright future, I come in trust. With love in my heart for all creation, I come in humility. Seeking justice for all, marginalizing none, I come in open-mindedness. With courage, I come willing to be transformed. And with great joy, I come to bind myself to you so that together we can do what we cannot do alone. This is the covenant I try to live into every day. Okay. It's good to be together again. This morning we have actually have two chalice lightings. The, the first did not make it into the order of service. A living tradition is not bequested through some law of inheritance. It must be earned, not without dust and heat, and not without humbling grace. Now please rise if you are willing and able for our, ch for our chalice lighting. We gather in loving community, creating a shared vision of compassion and dignity for all to radically transform the world in which we live. Now please stay standing and take out your teal hymn, hymnal for hymn number 1008, When Our Heart is in Holy Place.
Now it's time for our wisdom story. If the children would like to come forward and the young at heart to hear this story for all ages this morning. Hello. Good morning. So this story this morning is called This is Our House by Michael Rosen and illustrated by Bob Graham. And those are, it's a big uh, apartment complex where a bunch of children live in the city. George was in the house. This house is mine and no one else is coming in, George said. It's not your house, George, said Lindy. It belongs to everybody. No, it doesn't, said George. This house is for all for me. Lindy and Marley looked in the window. It's not your house, George, and we're coming in. Oh, no, you're not. This house isn't for girls. Ooh. Freddy was walking past with Rabbity. I've come to put Rabbity to bed, said Freddy. Freddy took Rabbity for a ride in the car. Charlene and Marlene fixed the front wheel. George won't let me and Rabbity in the house, said Freddy. Charlene and Marlene, Freddy and Rabbity headed straight for the house. Stop right there, said George. We're coming in to fix the fridge, said Charlene and Marlene. <laughs> oh, no, you're not, said George. This house is not for twins. Luther's jumbo jet landed in the house, and he went to get it. Just where do you think you're going, said George. Flight 505 has crashed, said Luther, and I'm coming in for a rescue. Fire, fire, whew, whew, whew. No, you're not coming in here, said George. Pushed him out. Luther radioed for help. Calling Dr. Sophie, calling Dr. Sophie. Can I help you, said Sophie. We can't get at the plane, doctor, said Luther. Just leave it to me, said Sophie. Sophie and Luther pushed through the crowd. Make way for the doctor, said Luther. We're coming in, said Sophie. <clears throat> oh, no, you're not, said George. This house isn't for people with glasses. Rashida had a plan. I'm going to tunnel in. She poked her head under the house. Go away, said George. This is my house. Well, this is my tunnel, said Rashida. Well, tunnel somewhere else, said George. This house isn't for people who like tunnels. It was getting very noisy around the house now. And uh, George wanted to go to the bathroom. I'm going to leave my house now, said George. And no one can go in it when I am gone. And George went to the bathroom. Lindy, Marley, Freddie, Rabbity, Marlene, Charlene, Luther, Sophie, and Rashida went straight into the house. <laughs> what a surprise. George came back, and there was no room for George. This house isn't for people with red hair, said Charlene. George started to shout. George started to cry. He started to stamp his feet and kick the wall. And then he stopped, and he looked. This house is for people with red hair, said George. And it's for girls and small people and twins and for people who wear glasses and like tunnels. Because, shouted Lindy, Marley, Freddie, Marlene, Charlene, Luther, Sophie, and Rashida, this house is for everyone. Yay, and that's the end. <laughs> so tell me, what did you think of the story? What was your favorite part? So I can come here. When, when we see this, we, we like, well, this is my tunnel. This is my tunnel. <laughs> yeah, they were not going to let him get the better of them, were they? How about you? Favorite part? Uh, that's my favorite is sharing is caring. Sharing is caring, yes. <laughs> Very good. And that's the moral of the story. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, so now we all know 
how to share, right? Thank you for listening. We're going to sing you to your classes. This congregation takes a good portion of our Sunday morning offering and gives it away to a social justice cause outside our church walls. This month, we are supporting the good works of the Little Portion Friary, which started in 1982 when Deacon John and Reverend Alexis realized that homeless men and women needed to a home-like setting and a sense of personal involvement with individuals who cared about them. The friary depends almost entirely on donations and the efforts of volunteer workers. Those who volunteer work together as a team without publicity, positions, or titles so that guests can regain control over their lives. Guests have given have given of themselves by offering comfort and encouragement to one another in their struggles. To support our church and to support our Share the Plate ministry, you can drop a check or cash in the offering plate. You can use PayPal by going to our website. You can also send a check to the church through the mail, or you can arrange a regular automatic deposit with your bank. If your offering is in the form of a check, please indicate on the memo line whether it is our Share the Plate ministry or your 2024 pledge. Let us give generously to support our church and our wider concerns. I just made something unexpected Something sharp, something new It's not symmetrical or perfect But it's beautiful and it's mine What else can I do? Bring it in, bring it in What bring else in, can in. I Hides behind my smile. What could I do if I just grew what I was feeling in the moment? You know where you're going. Whoa! What could I do if I just knew it didn't need to be perfect? I just needed to be, and they let me be. A hurricane of hot got under strangling fits. Big. Hanging by. This is fun.
everybody clear the way. I'm coming through with Tabe Booyah. She's coming through with Bach and Booyah. Making waves, changing minds. The way is clearer cause you're here and well I owe this all to you. What else can I do? Show them what you can do. What else can I do? There's nothing you cannot do. In the center of our service and in the center of our lives, let us pause to honor the silences of the world. Let us open our hearts to the place of quiet, to the silent prayer for the healing of pain and the soft, gentle coming of love. This morning I'm gonna share with you from our hymnal 468, if you'd like to follow along, We Need One Another by George E. O'Dell. We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted. We need one another when we are in trouble and afraid. We need one another when we are in despair and temptation and need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish some great purpose and cannot do it alone. We need one another in the hour of success when we look for someone to share our triumphs. And we need one another in the hour of defeat, when with encouragement we might endure and stand again. And we need one another when we have come to die and would have gentle hands prepare us for the journey. All our lives we are in need, and others are in need of us. May it be so. And now let us fill the sanctuary with the names of all of our loved ones, suffering and sorrow, some celebrating in joy, each name a breath, each breath a prayer. those in the world who are suffering in fear and in pain this morning. The breath of nature is upon us, the spirit of life is within us, and the community of love surrounds us. So be it, blessed be, and let the church say amen.
I'm going to ask you to help me with today's reading in your gray hymnal number 637. The Litany of Atonement is a responsive reading, and I'll read the words that go straight up and down, and you can read the italics after me, but that's um, number 637. And as you read this, you may notice that later in the service, you hear the same exact words again set to music, and we'll ask you to sing them later. So this is the run through just to speak the words so that later when we sing them together, you'll know what they are. For remaining silent when a single voice would have made a difference, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For each time that our fears have made us rigid and inaccessible, For each time that we have struck out in anger without just cause. For each time that our greed has blinded us to the needs of others. For the selfishness which sets us apart and alone. For falling short of the admonitions of the Spirit. For losing sight of our unity. For those and for so many acts, both evident and subtle, which have fueled the illusion of separateness. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. Thank you. First, I want to ask you, um, the offering basket went around and there were pencils in. Does everybody have something to write with? If not, we'll pass those around again while I'm speaking. For this is a project, we're going to put you to work. So, um, Gordon McKeeman, who was a uni who is a Universalist minister, once said, "Since we're all going to end up in heaven, we may as well learn to get along now." Right? <laughs> James Luther Adams, I love what he said too. He said, "Church is a place where you where you get to practice what it means to be human." And as we all know, being human means we make mistakes. I made a huge mistake this morning. When I went to uh, save my sermon, it said, would you like to uh, replace this with the original? And I had taken out a part of the sermon, a story, which I thought I wasn't going to do, but I am now. Um, and I said, yeah, just replace it. Well, it turns out I lost the whole sermon. It's a kind of a strange morning, though, isn't it? I think there's all kinds of funny things happening this morning. <laughs> So that's okay. Um, so having a covenant is really important. And churches are really required to create their own covenant. Having a covenant is a guide. It doesn't mean that we're not allowed to disagree with one another. It simply states that when we disagree, we stay the course. We stay at the table. We listen. We will honor and acknowledge one another as we work towards understanding and resolution. As Francis David once said, we do not need to think alike to love alike. So I'm going to start with sharing you as the story that got me in trouble in the first place. It's by Barry Lopez. It's a wonderful author, Native American. <clears throat> it's called The Agreement. One time, before there were any people walking around this valley, there were bear people. They had an agreement with the salmon. The salmon would come up river every fall, and the bears would acknowledge this and take what they needed. This is the way it was with everything. Everyone lived by certain agreements and courtesies, but the salmon people and the bear people had made no agreement with the river. It had been overlooked. No one thought it was even necessary, but it was. 
So one fall, the river pulled itself back onto the shores the tree and the trees and wouldn't let the salmon enter from the ocean. Whenever they would try, the river would pull back and leave the salmon stranded on the beach. There was a long argument and a lot of talk. Finally, the river let the salmon enter. But when the salmon got up to the country where the bears lived, the river, the river began to run in two directions at, the, at once, north on one side and south on the other, roaring and heaving white water, rolling big boulders on the banks. And then it was suddenly still. The salmon were afraid to move. The bears were standing behind the trees, looking out. The river then said in the middle of all this silence that there had to be an agreement. No one can do just what you wanted. You can't take someone for granted. And so for several days, they spoke about it. And the salmon said who they were and where they came from, and the bears spoke about what they did and what powers they had been given. And the river spoke about its agreement with the rain and the wind and the crawfish and so on. Everybody said what they needed and what they would give away. And then a very odd thing happened. The river said that it loved the salmon. No one had ever said anything like that before. No one had been willing to take that chance. It was an honesty that pleased everyone, and it made a very, for them a very deep agreement among them. They were able to reach an understanding about their obligations to each other, and everyone went their way. And this remains unchanged. Time has nothing to do with this. This is not a story. When you feel the river shuddering against your legs, you are feeling the presence of all of these agreements. So we have a house here. This, you've noticed the theme of house in our service. So Alice Blair Wesley, one of our uh, famous historians, um, paraphrased James Luther Adams, and she said, strong, effective, lively, liberal churches, sometimes capable of altering positively the direction of the whole society, will be those liberal churches who lay, whose lay members can see, say clearly, individually, and collectively what are their most important loyalties as church members. So the foundation of the house is the most solid element upon which they rest, the rest is built. So what element of your covenant will you like to be the foundation? What is your most important loyalty? What words in your covenant would you like to express that? So, and Rebecca Parker and, James, and John Burens wrote a book called um, A House for Hope. And they referred to the foundation as how we speak of the ultimate mystery that is the source and sustenance of all of life, that source that some call God, that some call the ground of being, that some call the spirit of life, whatever it is you call it. So you have, um, if, does, if anybody needs a pencil, okay. Um, are the ushers still around? Okay, there we go. We got. We're passing out pencils. Keep your hand up, up if you need a pencil. So what I'd like for you to do, you have some sticky notes. Um, think about that. What, um, what one word, what would be your ultimate loyalty that you would like to represent the foundation of the house? Oh, <laughs> yeah, if you have, extra, if you have a, a lot of sticky notes, share. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so actually there's going to be like six elements to the house. So if you want to write them all on one, you can, but we'd like to keep them so we can document later.
Okay, so the foundation uh, is what is your um, most important loyalty, thinking about this beautiful space, this body of this church. And then we go to the walls. A covenant provides us with a definition of boundaries. It lays out the behaviors, actions, and responsibilities that define our communities. Like the walls of a house, our covenant provides the defining shape of the community. What parts of the covenant would define the shape of your life together? These we want to express on the walls. And Rebecca Parker, if you want to look at it from a theological point of view, says, the sheltering walls make this religious community. We are not bound by our doctrine or creed, but instead by our covenant. How do we build our community walls and still engage in interfaith dialogue and cooperation? So what would be a word that would represent that boundary? Gentle honesty. You got an idea. Okay. So now we have the roof. A covenant creates a safe space for spiritual exploration. Just as a roof provides us safety from the storm, what parts of your covenant can provide you shelter? And this you'll express on the roof of your house. You're going to have time to do this in the parish hall to work on this together. Rebecca Parker says, what can protect life from harm and repair and restore our lives? Next are the doors and windows. Although our covenants define the shape of our communities and define their boundaries of belonging, they are never, they're never designed to be exclusive. So that means to wall, we're not walled off in here and we don't wall us others out from here coming in. So the doors of our house, our covenants, must allow the freedom to enter and the freedom to depart. They must provide a welcome for others. Like the windows of a house, they should also help us see beyond our own walls. So in what ways would your covenant um, welcome others into the house? And what ways would it also provide you insight into the faith of others? In, underneath this roof, I would say we have very many different uh, theologies. Each of us has a different way to describe what is most important to us. So how do we protect that? and respect that. So, Rebecca Parker has the welcoming rooms. That's not listed in, the, uh, in this other text. So, the welcoming rooms, like the parish hall, the religious education rooms, the alliance room, how do we understand not only the nature of God, but the nature of being human together? How do we welcome the stranger into our midst? Within any house of hope, there breathes a sense of the holy, a response to the sacred that is present in life, inspiring creativity, compassion, and social action. Worship, art, ritual, music shape the religious community, infusing the atmosphere in its environment, making space for people to breathe. So what is a word in your covenant that would help us um, identify, define, and protect the sacred, the music, the art, the ritual? And the last is the garden. And you have that lovely garden out front. So Liz drew a beautiful garden on our house. So the garden, the earth is our habitation, the home that gives us birth and our final resting place. 
And yet our Earth is threatened by global warming, has been damaged by humanity's failure to establish just and economic systems. The garden is the symbol of hope. Mary Oliver refers to it as that. She said, the car starting with the crocuses and not necessarily ending with the mums, we who live in the North Country understand that the hope of spring never dies. Instead, it's enhanced by the scent of fall leaves and the warmth of the crackling fire and the homemade winter stews and soups, the moonlight on the snow-covered fields. With the dormant grass lying beneath, sometimes we think it'll never come back. She says, the pine trees never forget their recipe for renewal. Consider always every day the determination of the grass to grow despite unending obstacles. So the garden represents hope. And how can you include hope and the garden in your covenant? So I think Liz and um, Sharon have some ideas about covenant that they'd like to share with you and how they might express these aspects of the house. Thank you. Because we trust him. So okay, okay, Liz. So now we have now we're going to build this covenant. And for me, um, we had all that stuff out there. Really good words. Um, for me, when I think is uh, putting it together, I think trust is the foundation of our commute of our, our setup. Oh no. Give me this. Yeah. Give me this. I don't know why you think trust is the foundation when it's trust is like, she said the roof is what keeps us safe. I think that that's what trust is. It's what keeps us safe. And I think the foundation has to be community. Oh yeah, Liz, you're always, you always gotta be <laughs> dictatorial. No, yeah. for me, no, trust means part of trust is listening and being there for people. And so for me, community, uh, community would be part of what holds us up. Listening. <laughs> Do you want to tell me just a little bit more about trust as a foundation? Because I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Well, part of it, um, it goes to if you trust and be with somebody and you're going to listen and I will believe, I like to believe that you are listening to me when I'm explaining things um, and, and talking about where my position is. And so you would also be listening and hearing what I say and I can trust that you're gonna be hearing me. So maybe it really doesn't matter where we think the words go as long as we listen and have the conversation. And so we can actually leave these things where they are and have that conversation later today. I think we're set up for a good conversation, Kathy, because I'm ready to listen now. <laughs> No, I mean, it's just important that you think about it, and, and trust means different things to each one of us in the, in the congregation, and so does community, but it's all good. Yeah. So now I need button. to trust a button. <laughs> to Thank you. Thank you. Do you all remember um, the Carol Burnett show, the, our fam the family, when... Carol Burnett and her mom, Eunice, would have fights with her mother. It was just so funny. Um, we talked about doing a skit with that, of uh, a Carol Burnett skit, to sort of demonstrate how, um, how much, how much our words, our choice of words, can affect 
the, the outcome of a conversation. And so we, we want you to um, join, sit at a table with people that you don't normally sit with and get to know what their, what their um, most powerful loyalty is from this church and what matters to them. And so we will um, invite you into the sanctuary in just a few minutes. And um, before we do that, we're going to sing again. Hymn number 1037, we begin again in love, which is what Liz and Sharon just demonstrated. For remaining silent when a single voice would have made a difference. Each time that our fears have made us rigid and inaccessible, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again. In For each time we have struck out in anger without just cause. We For each time that our greed has blinded us to the needs of others, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For the selfishness that set us apart and alone, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For falling short of the admonitions of the Spirit. We forgive ourselves. sight of our unity. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For those and for so many acts, both evident and subtle, which have fueled the illusion of separateness. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again. So please join me in the words in your order of service to extinguish the chalice, which has already extinguished because I think it's out of oil which is just perfect for this day <laughs> as we extinguish this flame of this chalice may we carry its light with us into the world in the power of peace faith justice and love and so I'm going to use our closing words I'm going to just repeat Sophia ben Betancourt's beautiful covenant with hope for a bright future, I come in trust. With love in my heart for all of creation, I come in humility. Seeking justice for all, marginalizing none, I come in open-mindedness. With courage, I come willing to be transformed. With great joy, I come to bind myself to you so that together we can do what I cannot do alone. This 
is the covenant I try to live into every day. May it be so. Amen. No, it's a 